That's enough state mandated history for today. Any questions? Yeah, is this gonna be more like Futurama or Rick and Morty? This line is a prime example of how to destroy any kind of interest in your show. So I watched it so you don't have to. So when it comes to having a show that dips into a genre that is underutilized, especially in the small platform that adult animation has in this medium, comparing yourself to other shows that fall under the same umbrella does incredible damage to any potential you may have. Not only did Farzar do this, they did it within the introduction scene of its very first episode. It's one thing to be an established show and acknowledge a counterpart. It's still bad because you're giving competition recognition and in turn could interest your fan base. However, you're established. You have a dedicated fan base that will stick with you for the long haul. The damage wouldn't be as harsh. Doing it just as you introduce yourself can immediately avert your target audience. If I wanted to watch a show that is similar to Rick and Morty, I would watch Rick and Morty. Even as a bat with an open mind, you're starting off on the wrong foot in impressing me. But I held my breath and gave it a chance. And I regret it. Here's a best perspective of Farzar. So if you were to ask me about this show's animation quickly, my response would be, it's a lot. This show's animation is one that editing Jason will hate. Not because the style looks terrible, even though it does, it's because the series goes all out in sexual jokes. So expect a lot of cakes in this video. Anyways, as I stated before, the style for the series is very unpleasant to look at. None of the characters design-wise really caught my eye, except for maybe two or three at most. Actually, the thing that really bugs me is how a lot of the designs are over-sexualized for no reason. There are a lot of spandex, lingerie, BDSM gear to go around. Not to mention how a lot of the designs enforce a large amount of racial stereotypes, and oh lord, we will get to that. Since this is an adult show on Netflix, they are able to get away with quite a lot visually. They can flat out show private parts and go all in on the amount of gore in every episode. These kinds of scenes do a pretty poor job in making me laugh in general, so seeing this on a constant basis did nothing but make the season feel like such a drag. You can tell that a good portion of the animation was given to the opening scene and intro. Other than that, it's pretty lackluster overall. So, uh, characters. Yeah, they exist. That's probably the best praise you will get out of me. In any case, overall, the characters are extremely one-dimensional. Hell, a lot of the characters are downright insulting to many demographics. It's extremely stereotypical to the point of being very frustrating to the eye, and it brings out the worst representation I've seen in a while. I understand that not every show's job is to show a culture accurately. But even so, the attempts at expressing these archetypes are incredibly poor in taste that even those who enjoy self-loathing jokes could consider it to be the bottom of the barrel. Starting off with Feichel, he's essentially the epitome of a privileged protagonist. He is a 30-year-old man that has been pampered his entire life. Since he literally lived in a bubble, he never really had any sort of experience with the world the human race inhabits. There's not a lot to him that makes you feel he can be intriguing. I mean, he's seen as someone who always wants to see the good in others and can be ignorant to their flaws. He can be manipulated very easily. So when he realizes he's been duped, he switches gears pretty quickly and acts out of spite, but loyal to his team and his shady-ass dad. 
So basically, your average rich white dude that leeches off his parents' wealth. Well, if you care more about your dick than me. I do. I don't like to brag about it, but it's big, by the way. Fine, we'll kill Bazarak without you then. <sighs> All right. I'm just going to simply state this the best way I can when it comes to Scooty. As a black man myself, fuck this character. When we talk about a definition of a character being there for tokenism purposes, Scooty definitely fills that category. Like he enforces every single stereotype that gets added to adult comedy. He does an ungodly amount of drugs, only pulls the black car when it benefits him the most, plays the BBC joke way too many times, gets unbearably loud and obnoxious, I could really go down the entire list of what could make a really bad black character, and he checks every box. So of course he is the best friend of the main character, because that trope hasn't been done in any series. This character frustrated me because he is the biggest example as to why I think they weren't even trying to be unique as a show overall. Which is frustrating, because while we have seen improvement of black representation in animation, it's clearly a terrible depiction that adds to a large list of things holding the series back. Man, this ain't no fucking chill cube! Your drug problem is out of hand! I got an audition in 20 minutes! Mal and Val honestly didn't really have a lot going for them until the very end of the season. The two of them play off the trope of twins with polar opposite personalities. Mal is the hard-nosed badass that is lustful for blood. She's clearly someone who is enthralled with being on the front lines. Even so, she does have a bit of a soft side that she's afraid to show. While for Val, she's essentially the one who receives a lot of BS from a majority of the cast. She's the one that tries to be reasonable and wants the best for everyone involved. Of course, she is really seen more as a tool for others as they don't really listen to her or is just interested in her sexually, which can be said the same for Mal. Ugh, give it to me hard, you bitch! Ugh. Oh yeah. Are you sure you're a virgin? Though there are moments where she seems like a time bomb ready to go off at any second. There really isn't too much to go on about these two outside of Val being the love interest for Feikel. So again, not much out there to really grasp your interest in a character like this. I prefer Zack and Wheezy or Devin and Cornwall. Oh, who cares? All of you will die by my hand one day anyway. <laughs> yep, she's gonna snap soon. Okay, so Barry is your mentally unstable scientist. Yeah, there's not much else to say about that. Here's where you see most of your self-deprecation humor. Though, for me, it's not the kind that I would want as it makes me very uncomfortable to watch very quickly. A lot of the jokes that are out there are because of Barry. Of course, with him being the scientist, you would expect him to do something you would least expect it. However, even with what is considered unpredictable to do, it's not a surprise that he would do it. That's not a compliment, by the way. Hey, Doc, can you do something about that? Right. No, Billy, you must grip the shaft tighter or you'll never climax. All right, so, uh, is it wrong to think that Billy is one of the two characters I enjoyed the most on the Shat Squad? Oh, yeah, I forgot this is the name of this team. Billy, while having the most disturbing introduction, is one of the more pleasant characters to see throughout it. He doesn't play a large role in the season, but he always find ways to be the most logical out of all the characters in the scene. Which is funny considering that he speaks broken English. The only gripe I have with him is basically that he is a walking sex object. No, seriously, he has a pussy on one of his feet. Other than that, decent character. If you hadn't pulled me out of there, I don't know what would have weighed. Did you say you came? Moving on, maybe instead of chaos a lot, you be chaos a little. Finally on the squad, we have Zorbo. Honestly, one of the wildest characters since he is a species called the chaos a lot. You can only imagine he gets his fix by one thing. Chaos, chaos. So I feel he's another character that falls into the tokenism standards because he has traits that are similar to what you would expect a Hispanic stereotype to fall in. 
diving into having an addiction of some sorts, being the person that starts a lot of mayhem, is heavily into sex culture, and being the illegal immigrant. I'm sure there are more that he dives into, but those are the major ones that are too hard to ignore. I do consider him to be more of the bearable characters overall, which should show you how much likability this cast has. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck this guy. Now let's get into the antagonist? Question mark? That would be Feikel's dad, Renzo. He is the king of Farsar, and uh, he's pretty much an evil dictator. He makes it very clear that he thinks very little of those that are not human. Hell, he thinks very little of those that are not him. Everything he does is only to aid him in keeping his spot on the throne. We see that with how he views his son, and his sex life with his wife. We'll get to that. A major issue I have with him is the physical features he has. The flowing blonde locks and the whole white knight getup he's got going on really gives off some bad vibes that the show is trying to enforce a certain term on a person of color. Which I mean I'm not saying it can't happen. Look at Candace Owens. She's a prime f***ing example. Your son has been captured by Bazarak. What? He said it's time to go to Costco. <gasps> Pick me up some brownie brittle while you're there, honey. <laughs> So, Queen Flammy, to keep it brief, is an old, crusty sex addict. I feel she's more of a parody of Queen Elizabeth. All she does is try her best to get into the pants of Renzo or reveal her dementia here and there because old lady. There's not much to her outside of that, so uh, yeah, moving on. Yeah, that's warming my whisker biscuit. <laughs> Lastly, we have Bazarak the final character voiced by the very talented Dana Snyder, who takes on three roles in this series. Freaking legend. But yeah, this is another antagonist. Question mark. He's certainly not one to be taken seriously. He pays more attention to the looks of a villain rather than being the villain. Sure, he's tunnel vision, but in a way that's a lot more enjoyable. He's like a pesky teenager with all that he does. He is someone that falls often due to his own incompetence, but I feel that's one of the very few positives that the show has overall. So while he doesn't have a lot to his name, he is the most enjoyable next to Billy, who works so well together. I'm Bazarak. I'm gonna take over your city and make you kneel before my fierce eyebrows. Holy shit, you suck at impressions. Alright, so a lot of the plot points within this series makes me want to bash my head against the wall with the amount of stupidity that is placed within them. There isn't any real way to sugarcoat this, but a lot of the plot points mirror quite a lot of issues America deals with today. A lot of them being racial issues, and boy do they do a terrible f***ing job in that. Like, mocking BLM and workers' rights movements was done in very poor taste. Immigration issues was absolutely pissed on. And the handling of addiction had little to no seriousness to it. Let's not forget about the sex jokes. Oh my god, there were so many f***ing sex jokes. This kind of unhinged comedy doesn't fit the mold anymore in today's standard for adult comedy. Like sure, if this was on Adult Swim in 2002, I'm sure it would have a solid following. Too bad we're in 2022 now, and there are plenty of adult animation that does more than just throw gore and sex in your face for laughs and call it a day. Hell, there are other shows that have similar settings to Futurama and Rick and Morty, and they did it a thousand times better than what you did! They actually take a moment to take themselves seriously and not automatically compare themselves to either of those goddamn shows! Alright, so to answer the question, is Farzar like Rick and Morty or Futurama? F*** no. Absolutely f***ing not. All of the characters are below average at best and totally abysmal at worst. 
The animation style is not very pleasant, and they are trying way too hard with the amount of gore and sexual moments throughout the show. And the story is nothing but a goddamn crapshoot that fails in molding other successful methods to form its own identity. Trying meta humor is not going to make you look witty or smart. Doing cutaway gags does not force a laugh out of me, and trying to throw a large amount of shock value my way will make me numb to it quickly. All that's doing is reminding me that there are other shows that are out there that do the same thing in a much better and much more calculated way. This is by far the worst show I've seen in a very long time. Curse my job of having to finish a season once I started it on Netflix. However, I do think this is important to know that adult animation is above this type of comedy now. Cartoons are more than just a comedic outlet when it comes to adult entertainment. Hell, even the comedic side of adult animation has continued to improve for the better. This was a reminder that we still have a long way to go in the adult portion of this platform. So we gotta tell it like it is, and simply ask for a show with more class than what was presented in Farzar. Thank you for taking the time to see this bat's perspective, and thanks to the grapes on Patreon. If you would like a shout out and watch a review a day prior, become a patron. Go to my other socials for updates and real life shenanigans. If you would like to see more perspectives, click on the videos to the left, subscribe and hit the bell icon to get the latest from me. Until then, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.